In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the internal battery of this dash cam, the Transcend 520. For the past six months or so, I've been having an issue with it where uh, every time I turn off the car, so like right now the car is on, the camera is getting powered by the car, but when I turn off the car, this is what happens. I'm going to turn off the car right now, and then it completely shuts off and the recording gets lost. So what has happened is that the internal battery that is in this camera has gone bad. And today, I'm gonna show you how to replace it. To work on it easier, I'm gonna remove this mounting bracket. And if you notice, if I try to power it on, nothing happened. That is because the internal battery of the camera, it's already dead. So I went ahead and I ordered some replacement batteries from China. Two batteries. So these are the 552535 430 milliamp batteries. I'm gonna put a link on the descript description of this video. I got them off eBay and you have to make sure that it is a three pin connector. So there are three cables going to the connector here. So there are one, two, three, four, and there's one underneath the sticker here. Yep six screws that we need to take out. I don't think we have to remove these two. I'm gonna be using my iFixit kit to the screwdriver. So the bits that we're gonna be using for the screws is a Torque T3. So here comes the first screw and we're gonna keep it nice and organized in there. And then again, the other screw is underneath the sticker here. So we got one, two, three, four. See if that's enough to remove this. Um, I think we are gonna have to remove this too. They're all the same size. It's okay if you mix the screws. Okay, so we got those. Let's try to pull now. That's a lot easier. Let's see, there you go. So you can just pull it apart. Don't be afraid to crack some stuff. And the SD card ended up shooting out, so it's probably better if we remove this first. And this is what you get. So this is the part that goes on top. You remove that. And the battery is underneath this. So to get to it, we're gonna have to remove this PVC plate, PVC board. We are gonna remove it. And for that, I think we have to take out the screen and it reveals four screws. One, two, three, and four. So we gotta remove this plate and then remove everything else. I will keep these four screws separate just because I'm not sure if they're the same size. Seems like they are the same size, but still I'm gonna keep them separated. That way we'll put the same, same ones back. Now I gotta say this camera has worked for me wonderfully. Never had an issue until the battery start started not working. But other than that, it's been recording and I've recorded a lot of crazy stuff with it. So I'm glad I have it. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not having it. Then you're gonna find that this is being held by some uh, plastic clips here at the edge. Just move those aside. And this part should be able to come up. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's another screw holding everything. Yep, there's a screw right here. Now you can carefully remove this and it's being held underneath by the battery cables and also the LCD cables that go to the front lens or the camera lens. So what you wanna do is you wanna remove this cable here with the three pins of the battery. You wanna remove it from the bore. There you go. And after you do that, you can go ahead and remove the battery. It's being held there by with glue. You just force it out. And now you have the battery. Now this is the dead battery. And you can tell that it looks bloated and that's not good. 
when that one when these batteries get bloated like this that means that they are not good anymore so let's compare it to one of the new ones that we have so when you can look at them from the side you can tell you can tell that the old one is fatter make sure that the connection is the same which it is three pins one black one white and one red now the old battery has this 3m i guess insulation tape i'm gonna go ahead and take it out and put on the new one so the old battery was like this in the case so you want to put the new one the same way so like that and i'm gonna grab the cable and plug it the orientation is going to be like this and push it in there you go it locked and now we are going to put everything back screw it in and you don't have to torque it too much you want to bring back the plate grab the lcd screen move it aside and then align the plate with the holes and then we are going to put back all of the screws i was thinking of just throwing away the dash cam and buying a new one but why this one has worked perfectly for me and all you needed was an eight dollar battery replacement better than spending hundreds of dollars on a new one and just to make sure that it turns on let's see i don't know if the battery came charged or not but we're gonna try to turn it on oh we got something mm, we got a light but then it went off let's try again oh there it is no memory card whoa so it works perfectly let's turn it off nice so now we know that the new battery is working before we seal it up cap on okay put all the screws back now the battery doesn't seem to be fully charged but once we plug it back into the car and we start using it it should charge back up to 100 percent okay now the sticker doesn't want to stay on but i don't care about that again let's power it up and see if it works and it does I'm gonna go ahead and insert the SD card. I wanna stay there, there you go. All right, now we have a working dash cam for at least another five years. So we're back in the car and we are recording. So the camera, it's on and it should be charging the internal battery as well. And we're gonna turn off the car And there it is, auto turn off in 30 seconds. So it will record the last 30 seconds, save it, and then auto shut off. You wanna have this 30 seconds on because in case of an accident, you don't know if your car is gonna turn off right away due to the impact. And then you might lose a couple of seconds of footage, but if you do have this 30 seconds on, then you might be able to record something that is important. And there you go, the auto shuts off like it should. So I hope you found this video useful and hopefully this will help you get some more years of life out of your dash cam. And if you like the video, don't forget to like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And also, don't forget to clean 8-bit.